the differences in how men and women respond to stimulants. And the main factor is menstruation. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel, Rethink ADHD, where we're talking all things mental health and all things genomics. So one of you in the comments had an amazing question. Your question was, do stimulant medications change menstruation? And I was like, why didn't I think of that? Because I've definitely experienced some changes myself, but oddly enough, never thought to look into it. So I did. And of course I went to the research and I found out a few things. So there are some direct effects that your stimulants have on your menstruation. So, and actually it's bi-directional. Your menstruation has an effect on the efficacy of your stimulant medications, and then your stimulant medications have an effect on menstruation. So they kind of like hug each other. And then there's some indirect effects that are kind of due to the fact that many of us lose our appetite and may even lose weight. Research is suggesting uh, anywhere around an average of 10 pounds of weight loss when you're on a stimulant medication. That's not to say that you should use stimulant medications for weight loss, don't do that, that's bad for your health. Okay, I'm just putting that out there. Uh, if you ask me about it, I won't answer it. So um, so you do lose a little bit of weight, oftentimes because a side effect of stimulant medications is appetite suppressant. Suppression, woo, here we go. If you don't know what I'm talking about and the side effects of stimulants, I'm gonna put a video up here somewhere. Go back and read or watch, read, watch the pros and cons of ADHD medications video because that'll tell you everything about the side effects of these different medications and what you need to look out for. But I'm not gonna talk about them here. So back to the, the situation at hand. So we'll start first by talking about the direct effects of stimulant medications on menstruation and vice versa. Uh, I didn't want to assume that we were all coming in at the same level of understanding menstruation. So we're going to talk about it. <laughs> so you can really think about menstruation having three main phases. You have your actual menstrual cycle, which can range depending on the woman. And you have your follicular cycle, your follicular phase. And then after that, you have the luteal phase. So those are the three phases. Somewhere between the follicular and luteal phase, you have ovulation. If we're assuming that you have a standard 28 day cycle, that's gonna be around the 14 day mark when you have uh, the ovulation portion. And again, that's between follicular and the luteal phase. Between all of the, so moving all of this stuff around, there are actually two main hormones that are responsible for doing that. You are probably familiar with them. Women, if you've taken birth control pills or even had a conversation about birth control pill, pills, so. Those are estrogen and progesterone. Um, when you're looking at the three phases laying out, and again, you can vary quite a bit individually. Not every woman has a 28 day cycle. So uh, consider this within context of your own body. But if you lay all these out, you'll notice that estrogen kind of goes up a little bit uh, starting at day one, it goes down just before and stays down just a little bit after ovulation before going back up again. The way I memorized this in medical school was estrogen helps you grow boobs. And when you look at the hormone curve on the cycle, they kind of look like boobs. It worked for me, maybe it worked for you. The other hormone is of course, progesterone. And it's not nearly as, as dancy or curvy as our estrogen. It's going to go up slowly over the cycle and really reach the highest peak after ovulation during what is called the luteal phase. So let's talk about how your menstrual cycle impacts your stimulants. So when I look at the research, they've done, mm, I won't say quite a bit, but they've done some studies. Sorry, ladies, y'all know how we are. They don't care about us, they don't study us, but they have done some studies about the differences in how men and women respond to stimulants. And the main factor is menstruation. They actually found out that during the follicular phase, so the portion of the menstrual cycle that's just before ovulation, your stimulant medications for women are much more effective um, as compared to the luteal phase, which comes after ovulation. And this makes a lot of sense because if you look at the curvature of estrogen around that time, estrogen is going up and in preparation for ovulation. And there have been studies that have actually shown that estrogen helps our bodies increase the number of dopamine and serotonin receptors. So it makes sense that right around the time estrogen is increasing, which is in that follicular phase, you may also feel that your stimulant medications are working a little bit more effectively. So that's that. That's the first direct effect. Now, I think the person in the comments asked this question because they may have been experiencing some changes in menstruation. And so not necessarily differences in the way that your medic medications are going to work, but 
If you're experiencing changes in your menstruation, either you're not menstruating at all, you've had some uh, changes in terms of the heaviness of your menstruation, or you've had some changes in terms of the timing of menstruation, that doesn't surprise me. Because as your body increases the amount of dopamine, which is of course the whole point of taking your stimulant medications, dopamine also has the opposite of uh, effect on the brain where it also decreases two different chemicals that are responsible for controlling your menstrual cycle. And those two chemicals are luteinizing hormone or LH, and then follicular stimulating hormone or follicle stimulating hormone, however you wanna say it, and that's FSH. And so as dopamine increases, those two hormones will decrease and that can change the way that your menstrual cycle functions. Now, this is not just specific to us women. So there have also been some studies and I saw actually one case study of a man who had three children, no problems having them, everything was fine, started being treated for ADHD using Adderall specifically, and they were in their doctor's office six or so months later complaining that they were having trouble conceiving their fourth child. When they did the blood test for the male, they actually found out that the follicle stimulating hormone or, or FSH and luteinizing hormone or LH was really low. Testosterone was also really low. And that was actually causing him to have low sperm count. The good news is that once they stopped the ADHD medication, everything went back to normal. So these aren't exactly permanent side effects, though I will do a video on the long-term effects of taking stimulant medications, because I think it's important for you to know as you're picking what you wanna take and put into your body. So it's not just exclusive to women, it does impact male hormones as well. Uh, and that's something to consider, particularly if you're planning to conceive anytime soon, you wanna take that into consideration as well, that taking your stimulant medications may change the menstrual cycle of the woman. So it may be harder for you to track your ovulation. Uh, and then it also may change the quality and the motility of quantity, not quality, the quantity of the sperm for the male partner or the male donor, and in which case you may also have some issues conceiving. So that's the effect of menstruation on stimulant medications. And then that's also the direct effect of having that increased dopamine as a product of the stimulant medication and its impact on menstruation in the other way. So those are the two direct effects. On the other side of the house, you have your indirect effects. So like I mentioned, most of us have experienced some kind of side effects, even if it just happened when you first started your medication. For me, it was dry mouth and a loss of appetite. I had to set an alarm to remember to eat. <laughs> set an alarm to remember to eat, and I had to drink water like no other. Uh, those side effects really went away over time, but they were there with me. And I did have some challenges maintaining my weight during that period of time. So. Because of that weight loss, you all, as women, we, you may know this personally, I know this for sure, when I've done things with intermittent, intermittent fasting, it can change a lot about your menstrual cycle. And the way I think about this is like, your body, when, it, when you're thinking about creating a baby, you're not thinking about losing weight. Nobody says pregnancy, weight loss, those two do not come together in your mind. And so you can really think about your body's way of making sure you have enough nutrients to conceive successfully, is by ensuring that you're at the proper weight and you have the proper nutrition in your system available. Otherwise, what you can often see, particularly with athletes that are of a certain uh, BMI, very, very thin athletes, they actually stop menstruating. And of, of that is because the, as far as the body is concerned, this is not an appropriate environment to be conceiving. So whenever you're fasting, whenever you're losing weight law, losing weight, again, you may lose a little bit of weight when you're first starting your stimulant medication that may send a feedback signal to your brain that may change the quality and nature of your menstrual cycle and may even stop your menstrual cycle for a period of time. So be cognizant of that. And if you're planning on conceiving or you know, you, you're traveling and you just wanna be able to predict your menstrual cycle, make sure that you are getting enough nutrients and you are being mindful of the fact that your appetite may be a little bit suppressed and so you have to be more intentional about planning those meals. Scientifically, they've done a lot of research on this. So I found some awesome studies specifically looking at Ramadan and the impact that Ramadan has on young women's menstrual cycle. And they've actually found that there can be some menstrual changes or abnormalities, particularly for women that are fasting for periods of 15 days or more. Obviously, we're taking our stimulants for much longer than that. Some of us are taking a washout period over weekends and holidays, but needless to say, this is not something you're taking for a few days and then not. 
So you're definitely gonna fall in that category of women who need to be a little bit more uh, intentional and careful about menstrual irregularities as a result of stimulants, either because of fasting or because just of the chemical influence of dopamine and those changes in the body. What I find in the research in terms of like things you need to be worried about, um, nothing really. I, for the most part, when I was reading, I saw that the effects of stimulants tends to reverse over time. So it's very much like taking a break. If you decided that you wanted to uh, do something a little different as it related to your reproductive health, you could certainly stop taking stimulant medications and explore some of the other options. Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, do go back and watch that pros and cons video because it'll talk about all of the different medication options that are available for treating ADHD. There are a lot of non-stimulant options that are out there. So don't feel like if you, know, you wanna be treated for ADHD that stimulants are your only option. There are a lot of other options out there. I'm supposed to say like, comment, and subscribe in some point in this video. So I'm gonna say it now. Uh, make sure that you follow this video. I wanna hear more about uh, your journey here. Women in particular, are you experiencing any differences? Like I said, I definitely experience differences and for some reason, beyond me, it did not occur to me to investigate. Maybe because I wasn't like upset that I wasn't having a menstrual cycle. I mean, I'm, you know, it was, it, it was a vacation, it's fine. Um, but I do wanna hear more about it. I, I appreciate you all asking your questions. So do comment, I do talk to you all, and I do create content based on the questions that you have. So if you have any questions related to this topic or any other topic, do let me know. In the meantime, I will see you next week. Bye.